Hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead Pateri with you today. I'm moving like the wind, literally. We're about to get slammed again with another thunderstorm. Lots of rain going on right now. So let's talk about livestock guardian dogs. Guys, I get a lot of requests to make videos about livestock guardian dogs. And I'm gonna be completely honest with you as I'm out here with Miss Cora and Mr. Peaches. I am very guarded, no pun intended, in terms of doing videos on training. The reason being is because these dogs take very specific training. I also want to refer you to the experts for that information, okay, for obvious reasons, okay. What if I mess up? I don't want you to mess up. So I want you to go to the Facebook group learning about livestock guardian dogs or LGDs, okay. I'm going to put a link below. I've done it before. I'm going to do it again. The creator of that group is Miss Anna Abney. She's come to the Great Appalachian Homesteading Conference and she is so excited about teaching, guys, because she wants to get the right information out there, guys. There's a lot of bad information. I'm not going to even try to sugarcoat it, okay. There's bad information. There are individuals that are telling you that what they have and what you have is a livestock guardian dog. They're telling you that your golden retriever slash lab slash, you know, black and tan coon hound with a little bit of great Pyrenees is a livestock guardian dog. It's not. I didn't set the rules. I'm just passing the information. That doesn't mean you don't have an awesome dog. Doesn't mean you don't have a great pet. Doesn't mean you don't have a dog that could jump into the rescue on an, on an occasion. I, I get that. But in terms of it technically being a livestock guardian dog, you need to look at the referred list of animals. And you need to understand why they are livestock guardian dogs and maybe why your mixed breed. I've got mixed, I've got a mixed breed in here. I've got a pit bull. I've got in here a black and tan coon hound. And I've got Mr. Buddy, Buddy Bop. And he's everything under the sun. None of them are livestock guardian dogs. I'm not offended by that fact and neither should you, okay? This is to give you the right information so that you know how to study and train these animals. Because I'm gonna tell you what. You know, you can understand something to a certain level or believe somebody, but until you go through the walk of, of going, okay, so I've got a Great Pyrenees puppy, or I've got a Central Asian Shepherd, or I've got an Anatolian, whatever. And they're all puppies, okay? And they're all young dogs. And they go through different phases. But I'm going to tell you right now, when they hit about the two, two and a half mark, like I am seeing right now with um, Cochise, Man, when that light switch comes on, it is all business. You better have had an awesome foundation of understanding what you've got and a killer understanding of how to train this animal for multiple reasons. That is for your safety, for your poultry and your livestock safety, for your children's safety, and for liability purposes. Again, that's why I refer you to the group because these folks are experts. Jan Doner has a great book out called um, about farm dogs and she breaks it down. I've talked about it before. I don't care where you buy it, okay? I, you know, I'm gonna put the link below. If you don't wanna click on that link, hey, more power to you. Just know I saved you a hospital bill or saved your line of poultry or whatever because the expectations of people is at times unrealistic, okay? You have to work with these animals a lot. You have to really know how to stand firm with these animals in a very, very particular way. You have to understand what how their mind works okay how it shifts in terms of it being a 12 week old puppy a seven month old puppy a one year puppy a young young dog to even what happens from when it's spayed or neutered and then you shift over into more of an adulthood guys you got to get it right okay so i'm just saying we're being very particular with cora cora is an anatolian great pyrenees mix you know that uh cochise is a full great pyrenees I've never worried about Cochise. He is very loyal to me. Uh, we have done a pretty good job, as you've probably figured out. But I want you to know that it's not like training other dogs. And I want to give you some heads up. You really need to understand that you can't just put these animals out there. You're going to have to take the time for training. I'm beating a dead horse here, I know. But you have to understand that you also need to... I wish that I had um, leash trained him a little bit more. We did. We took him places off and on. Obviously, he went to the vet and we did certain things. But the animal, when it reached a very adulthood style status, and he had to leave his barn, and we went to the vet, had him neutered, and reacclimating him back into the barn because it did, in turn, stress him out, was quite a feat. 
And, um, you know, I think, and I talked to Anna about that, and she said it's stress. He, you know, you, he came out of his barn. You, he came away from his, from his domain, he, you know, he, what he knew. And I am going to let you know right now, it's, you've not seen a dog like that. A lot of folks ask me if they can come and do farm tours, and I love that. Thank you. It's a compliment. And we want to teach you, and we're looking for, you know, the, the conference is coming up in two weeks from today, and it's sold out. Uh, but we're already exploring more avenues and more venues and more things that are coming up, so stay tuned for that. Um, but I want to let you know that the reason I don't have folks up here, and this is not to sound like, ooh, ha, ha. Folks, I'm going to tell you right now, the dog that you see on my camera is not the dog you're going to see in real person, in real life. If you go to a farm and you are, it, and you know they have livestock guardian dogs, you better respect their domain. You need to talk to the owner and you better make sure that you understand their behavior and do not assume that you are going to be around that animal, whatever it guards, whatever it's bonded to, that you're going to be <laughs> really doing much of anything, okay? I'm trying to protect you and I'm also trying to protect these dogs because they are so misunderstood okay and what happens is is people can get hurt livestock or poultry can get hurt or killed but what happens is is the dog ends up getting a bad rep um, for different variations or different things and you know different variations and they suffer the most that's why so many of them are in um, rescues now you have all these rescues for great Pyrenees and livestock and uh, um, uh, Anatolians because people go and get these dogs and they just think they're going to throw them out there with the cattle or out there with the out there with the sheep and the pigs. Now, are there success stories with doing that? Of course there probably are because there's always an exception. But you have to work with these animals and they've got to respect you. It's not like you're the dog you got in the house, y'all. I'm just saying right now. So we are really working with Cora. And I am I have learned that I really want to acclimate her very seriously to a larger scale of my farm. I am also acclimating her very much to my children. I'm acclimating her more with leash training, working a lot more with her. Okay. And you know, I, I'm really lucky to have a lot of good friends that have had that really have true livestock guardian dogs. If you've got an uh, you know, if you've got a black and tan coon hound, I'm sorry. It's not a livestock guardian dog. If you got a Boston Terrier, one of my favorite dogs all on the, all the planet, he might be funny and bark and, and not touch your chickens, but it's not a livestock guardian dog. These animals bond and they are, are their own independent free thinkers. They have an entirely different um, at, um, response to things. And even within them, they do, okay? That is their job. That is what, these are not dogs that just came up 50 years ago. These dogs have been around for hundreds. If you really truly dive into the history of a Great Pyrenees and Anatolian Shepherd, you're going back hundreds and hundreds of years, if not thousands and thousands of years. Okay, this is not some breed that just came around after World War I, okay? No, whatever. So, I want to let you know that I don't, I'm very particular. <laughs> I'm very particular about showing you training, and that is to protect you, me, my dogs, everything. I want you to get it right, and I want you to go to the experts, right? So right now, Cora is laying in the mud <laughs> with Mr. Peaches. So let's show you Cora. She's doing great, and again, it's a slow, steady process. It is a time process. I tell people when you get these animals, as the LGD group will tell you, you're talking about you're a good, solid two-plus years of training. Okay, and you have to be, you know, really with it. So I want to show you Cora. She's muddy. You shouldn't expect any less. We'll see you in two weeks at the conference. We're so excited to see you. It's going to be a great day. All right, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Hey, what are you doing, Mud Mop? She's very serious. Let's show you. <laughs> Sit. Sit. Good girl. Come here, let's talk. Good girl. Good girl. Thank you. Oh no. Thank you, Muddy Mop. Uh-uh. Sit. Yes. Good girl. Come on. Good girl. 